What's a basic WordPress theme to start with? A basic WordPress theme to start with is definitely the DV WordPress theme from Elegant Themes. And what I'm going to show you is a tutorial about the basic builder, which is part of this WordPress theme. So if you are starting out and you want to build your own website, but you don't want all the coding and all the other stuff that you don't know anything about or just very little, don't worry check out this tutorial and if you want there is about three hours of tutorials on this WordPress theme so if you begin with WordPress this is definitely something you need to check out no coding drag and drop something very easy enjoy the tutorial oh and don't forget below the video there's some links where you can find the other tutorials In this tutorial, we'll be going over the Divi Builder, which you'll be using to build all of your pages when using the Divi theme. When you build a page with Divi, everything is comprised of sections, rows, and modules. Sections are your largest organizational element. Inside of a section are rows of columns, and in each column is a module, or multiple modules. Looking at this page here is a very basic layout. We have a single section, and inside that section, a row, of one half, two one-half columns, and inside the first column we have a text module, and in the second column we have an image module. Let's go over to our builder to see what that looks like. This blue section here, that's the section. The green here, that's the row. It's a row of two columns, and in each column is a text module and an image module. Settings are available for each of these. You can see the icon here is the settings icon, so sections have various settings, as well as the modules, but we'll get into more of that later. Now you can have any number of sections on your page, so let's add a new one to see how it works. I'm going to click the add section button. You can see that all sections need to have a row, so your first row has already been added. You just need to choose how many columns you want inside of it. So click the Insert Columns button to get a list of all the available column layouts. For this next column, I'm going to do four one-fourth columns. You can see once your columns have been added, you can click in any of them to add a module. So I'm going to add a module inside this first column by clicking the Insert Modules button. And then I'm going to add an image module. So you can see here's a list of all of our available modules. I'm going to click the image module and once you click a module you're going to get all the various settings for that module. For the image module the first thing is to choose your image. So I'm going to upload an image. I'm going to upload all of these. And I'm going to set this image as the image for this module. I'm going to input my alt text. I'm not going to link this anywhere. I'm going to have the animation fade in from the left. And save. So once you've added a module, you can see that it appears here. And you can take your modules and put them in anywhere, really. So if I want to drag it to this empty column, I could do that. Or I could bring it up here and put it underneath or above my other image. Let's put it back where I started from. Now if we preview our changes here, you can see that this new image has been added down below our other section. So let's add some more images pretty quickly here. I'm just going to add these other images that I just uploaded in each of these columns. Okay, so I've added four image modules, each in their own one-fourth column inside this row here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. There we go, we have a section with the one-half column, one-half column, a text module in the first column, an image module in the second column. 
Below that, we have a new section with a four one-fourth column row, and in each column, we have an image module. Now let's go. Now um, I think I'd like more separation between these two sections. So what we can do is give our second section a different background color, which you can do in the sections options. So on that second section, I'm going to click the options icon to bring up all of the available options for the sections. Now you can do all kinds of great stuff with sections. You can choose a background image, a background color, a background video. You can enable or disable inner shadows, or you can um, enable or disable parallax effects for background images, which will give them a nice fixed position as you scroll, which is really cool. For this section, I'm uh, not going to use a background image or a background video. I'm just going to do a simple color. So I'm going to click the background color option and just use a really nice gray, subtle gray. There we go. I'm going to select that. I'm also going to turn on inner shadows, which will give it a little bit more separation. And save. So let's preview that. There we go. So we have a, this new nice gray section, which has been separated. Looks great. You can also add new rows within the sections you've already created. So you can see this little add row button here. I'm going to add a new row below my images. Let's see, I'm going to click the insert layout or insert um, row button. And for this, let's do another one half, one half column. So you can see a new row has been added. Now these can be rearranged anytime by dragging and dropping, which is great. And you can also take your rows and put them into different sections. So if I wanted to take these images that we created earlier and put them inside the first section up above my other images, I could do that. Let's take a look at what that looks like. There you go. You can see the images have been added to this row, or this section, above the previous row. Let's bring them back down to where they belong. And so below this, I've added my new row with two one-half columns. I'm just going to put some uh, text in there for now. Keep it things simple. Now for the text modules, you can choose your text color. So if you have a dark section, you know we just chose our section background color. It's a light gray, so I want to keep my text dark to make sure it shows up nice. But if you had a dark background color, you can make your text light instead. You can also choose your text orientation. So I'm just going to keep it floating to the left and uh, click save and in here let's add some tabs so I'm going to click the tab module now this is one of our more advanced modules within the tab modal window you get to add tabs with uh, you get a new um, setting for adding tabs so you'll see this button here it says add tab you can click that to add a new tab you can choose a title for the new tab. Uh, I'm just going to choose, I'm just going to call it button. That's simple, and then add some text. So add a new tab. I can add one more. Button 2. Add some text. Save. There we go. So we just create a tab module with two new tabs. Now you can adjust the order of the tabs by dragging and dropping as well. And you can choose an admin, admin label. For all of our modules, you can choose an admin label, which is great. So if you have a lot of modules on your page and they're all called tabs, it's going to be hard to remember which one is which. So you can change that. So I'm just going to call this details. And you can see it changed the label here. So where this would have said tabs, it now says uh, details. And let's see what that looks like. We have our first section with an image and text, a second section with a f one row of four one-fourth columns with images, and a second row within that same section with some text on the left and some tabs on the right. So that's a really basic overview of how the filter works. Now that we have a basic understanding, let's get into a more advanced layout. With the combination of sections, rows, and modules, you can build just about anything. It's really great. Here you can see we have um, our demo up. 
This first section is a full width section with a slider. Below it, we have a new section with a single row of four columns. And below that, a new section with a row of two columns with an image module, a text module, and below the text module, a counters module. Below that, we have a new section of four one-fourth columns, each with an image module inside of it. And below that, we have a new section with a background image, a text module, an image module, and so on. So let's go over how you might create something just like this. I'm going to create a new page. Call it home page test. Now when you're creating a new page and you want to use the builder, the first thing you want to do is click the use builder button. Now if you already have some content in your page, I'll just add something here, that content will automatically be added to the builder within a full column row within a text module. Let me see, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to click use, build, use page builder. The old text editor goes away and the builder editor comes up. And you can see that a text module has already been added. This is just because there's already content within my page. So if I, if I look at this, you can see that what I just wrote is in here. Now if at any time you want to go back to, to the default editor, you should be warned that all of your builder content will be lost and your page will be reverted back to its original state. So if I go click on use default editor, give you a nice warning, click yes, and now I'm back to where I started with a little bit of text I just added. Anyways, I want to start from a blank page, so I'm going to keep it blank and I'm going to click the use page builder again. There we go. We have a blank row inside of one section. Now, to start things off, if you're looking at our home page, the first element is a slider. Now, this is actually a unique element because it is a full width slider. You may have noticed that there is an add section and add full width section button. The full width section is a little bit different than a normal section. It has a, a different set of modules that um, each extend the full width of the page, which gives um, some cool possibilities. So for example, this full slider, which usually would have been cut off at a fixed width, because it is in a full width section, it gets to um, extend the full width of the page, which looks really cool. So let's create one of these. I'm going to add a new full width section by clicking the add full width section button. You can see that full width sections are purple instead of blue, which visually separates them a bit so you can know what you're editing. And when I click the insert modules button here, you get a different list of modules. There's only a couple full width, uh, full width modules right now. So let's add a slider. I'm going to click the full width slider button. Once you click the slider, you'll have various settings. You can choose whether or not you want to show your arrows, whether or not you want to have uh, circle buttons, little pagination buttons. You can choose whether or not you want to have a parallax effects for your images, and you can choose the um, admin label, as with all of our modules. The first thing you need to do in your slider is add a new slide. You can have any number of slides within the slider, so let's add one. Click the Add New Slide button. You can choose um, some heading text for your slider. So I'm going to say, this is a heading. Um, button text, if you want to include a button. Mm, click me. Uh, button URL, which is um, the URL you, where you want your button to lead to. So I'm just going to send people to Google. And you can choose a background image, a background color, or a background video. For this slide, I'm just going to choose a background image, so I'm going to click the Upload Image button. And then I'm going to upload a new background image. Actually, I'm going to upload all of these, because we'll be using these for the page. Okay, so here's the background image I like to use. I'm going to select it and click Set as Background. You can also choose to have an image next to your text. 
So if you upload if you upload a slide image, it'll appear to the left of your text, and if you don't upload an image, then your text will expand uh, the full width of the slider. So I'm going to add an image by clicking the Upload Image button, and click these uh, the stone image. Click Set as Slider Image, and that's it. Gonna, oh, also um, text color. So because of our because our background is dark, we're going to want to make sure our text is light. It's already set to light, so that's fine. And we're also going to have to add some content. So I'm just going to paste in some content here for the slide, which will appear below your heading and above your button. And click Save. And let's add one more slide. For this, I'm going to add a new heading. Button text as usual. Button URL. For this slide, I'm not going to use a background image. I'm just going to select a background color instead. Now, if you choose a background color and a background image, the background image is going to appear over the background color. So, in this case, I'm going to leave the background image blank. I'm just going to choose a nice green blue here. And I'm going to add some content as before. There we go, we have two new slides within our slider. And these slides can be rearranged at any time. You can also click the settings icon to get back into that slide setting if you want to change anything. Anyways, I'm going to click save and you can see that the full width slider module has been added. I like this to be at the top of our page, so I'm going to drag it to the top. And let's see what that looks like. Our first slide with the purple stone background and our stone image with some text on the right. And our second slide, which is a plain green background color and uh, text only, no image. So far, this is all we have on our page because that's the only row we've or only section we've added a module to. So let's add some more. Below our full width slider, I like to add a row of blurbs. Blurbs are just a combination of text and image. So I like to have four of them all next to each other. So I'm going to click insert columns and choose four one fourth columns. Inside of each of those columns, I'm going to add a blurb. So I'm going to click the insert modules button choose the blurb module. Now the, the blurb module is just a heading, some body text, and an image, so I'm going to choose my title text. You can choose to link your text somewhere by inputting a URL. I don't want to do that in this case, so I'm going to leave that blank. You can upload an image, I'm going to use this icon image. And then you can input your uh, text content below. Click Save. I'm going to add three more of these. There we go. I've added a module into each column, four of them in a row. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. So we have our slider, and below that, four blurbs in our new section. Let's add another section below that. I'm going to click the Add Section button. And inside here, I want to have um, a two thirds column next to a one thirds column. So I'm going to choose the two third, one third row. On the left, I'd like to have an image, and to the right, some text. So I'm going to choose the image module on the left here. And use this nice iPad, iPhone image. And to the right, I'm going to have some text. Have a line to the left, keep it dark, and click Save. Now you can also add any number of modules within a column below other modules by clicking the insert modules button you can see here so below the text I like to add some counters which are nice like stat bars so I'm going to click the insert modules button and choose the animated counters module you can add a new bar to your counter by clicking the add new counter button you can choose a title 
and a percentage. We're going to add a few more. Click Save. You can choose your text color, which I like to keep dark, and the background color of the bar. Okay, so now let's see what that looks like. We have a slider, four blurbs, an image, some text, and some counters. Now I'd like to add some separation between these two sections. So I'm going to adjust the settings of our third section here and give it a gray background color. as well as some inner shadows. Take a look at that. There we go, it's looking really nice. Now below that, if we're sticking to our demo layout. I'm going to add four more images, some icon images, which represent some of the great features we support. MailChimp, WooCommerce, WPML, so let's do that. Go back to our builder. I'm going to add a new section. And in this section, four one fourth columns. And in each of these, I'm going to add an image. Our logo images as seen here. Okay, so I've added four new images all in a row. Preview those changes. Got our slider, our four blurbs, our image, text, counter, and these four new images below that. All right, let's add a new section with a background image. This is a great feature of sections because they expand full width. And if you add a background image, it creates a really cool separation between the section above it and below it. So let's add a new section. And for this section, I'm going to add a background image instead of a background color. So I'm going to click the settings icon. And I'm going to upload a background image. And choose this one. Click set as background. You can also do a video background. In this case, I'm just going to do an image. So I'm going to keep it the way it is. And inside of this section, I'm going to add a text module and an image module. So I'm going to keep them full width. So I just want to add a one column row. Going to add some text. Now because this text is sitting on top of a image, I like to make sure that the text color is light. That way it shows up. And I'm going to center this text. Click Save. And below this text, I'd like to add an image. So I'm going to click the Insert Modules button again. Click the Image Module. Going to add this nice iPad Air image. Going to fade it in from the top. And click Save. So now I have a new section with a background image. Inside of that, some white text and an image below it. Preview those changes. All right, and now we've created a really great home page design, very similar to our demo. We have a slider, full width slider, four blurbs, an image and some text and a counter, four logo images, a section with a full width background image, some text and an image below it. And that's a basic overview of the Divi Builder.